Let's talk about the Falcon and the Winter Soldier episode two, because wow, th this was a great episode. It really was just amazing. I loved it. Like the first episode was good, but it was definitely a slow t start to the series. But things really pick up really quickly in, in this episode. I mean, within the first like five minutes of the episode, Bucky and Sam are already teamed up. So I loved it, and we have a lot to talk about, so before I get into all, breaking all this stuff down, let me know your thoughts on the episode in the comments below, but without further ado, let's jump into this. So we start off the episode basically kind of following up after the cliffhanger of episode one, where it was revealed that a new Captain America has been revealed to the world, and that new Captain America is John Walker. So we see a flashback, or actually, no, I think this is actually present day, technically, because this is a different ceremony that he's going to. But we're getting to know John Walker a little bit here, and uh, honestly, he seems like a good guy. Like, he's been set up to be one of the villains of the series, and at this point, he seems like a pretty decent guy. Like, he, he says, like, I don't want to fail him, I just want them to love me and everything, and... Yeah, I, I mean, seems like a good guy. And we do get Lamar Hoskins in here, giving him a bit of a pep talk, which in the comics, Lamar Hoskins is Battlestar, and we actually saw him take on that mantle later in the episode as well, who's basically kind of the new Bucky. So th th that's that's a way to kind of think of him here. Uh, so I thought that was pretty cool. And then we get the, the big football game stadium ceremony where John Walker is welcomed to the world as the new Captain America. We saw this in the trailer multiple times. And then he, he's revealed as the new Captain America. And we find out a little bit more about him. Like he won three medals of honor. He's got these crazy skills. And he said like he, he's not trying to be Steve. He's not trying to replace Steve. And he never knew him. But he thought of him as a brother, and he just wants to be the best Captain America that he can be. But this is the main thing that brings Bucky and Sam together in the episode, because the whole reason Bucky goes to meet up with Sam is because he saw on the TV this thing of John Walker saying that Steve Rogers was like a brother to him, even though he never met him, and even though Steve was really Bucky's brother, you know, in, in like a metaphorical sense. So that, that really hit him hard. A couple things in this episode really hit Bucky pretty hard uh but now we finally have sam and bucky teamed up the title of the series is finally true the falcon and the winter soldier so just great to see their relationship their relationship is awesome like the banter like it, even when they're fighting it, it they're like they're it's so funny I, I i just love it it was so awesome and obviously bucky is mad at sam for giving up the shield and sam's like i i, I don't have time to deal with this i gotta go deal with these flag smasher guys and they're like, ooh, maybe the big three. Maybe it's part of the big three. And we saw that in the trailer as well. But then they go to Munich, which is the last place that they were spotted, the Flag Smashers. And they find this warehouse where there's eight different Flag Smashers there. And then they're in a chase with them. They chase after their trucks and everything. And we get this big fight, including Aaron Kellyman's character of Carly, who is a, uh, a gender-bent version of of the original Flag Smasher from the comics, and she is basically the leader here, and she kills Red Wing! Oh my god, can you believe it? That was actually spoiled in the trailer, but she kills Red Wing. Hopefully we can get Red Wing back. I mean, he is just a robot. It's not like he's, like, Vision, where he had, like, a soul and everything. And also, I believe in Avengers Infinity War, we saw Falcon do something where he had, like, multiple Red Wings, so... I feel like this is not the last of Red Wing, and I mean, even though he doesn't do much and we don't see much of him, Red Wing's awesome. We, we gotta revive him, you know, re restore the, the Red Wing, you know? So, that was pretty cool. Things were going good. I mean, they were getting their butts kicked, but then Captain America and Battlestar come to help, and one thing I want to point out is that Cap uses a gun, or... Uh, you know, honestly, it feels weird calling him Cap. John Walker uses a gun here. I mean, he uses it very briefly, but I thought that was really interesting. Another huge difference between Steve Rogers and John Walker, because Steve Rogers did originally use a gun as Captain America back in his first movie, because that was the 40s. That was what they do in World War II. But 
I, I, I thought it was pretty a, th- a pretty interesting detail there. And um, let's see, yeah, so there's this big fight, they're all doing that, and Sam and Bucky, they get flung off the truck, but this is when they realize that these Flag Smashers, they have to be super soldiers. That's right, they're not part of the big three, they're most likely super soldiers. And obviously that is not a good thing. But everyone basically fails this mission, including Captain America and Battlestar. They get flung off as well. Well, the the flag smashers are able to escape. So things are not going good. But um, this is when they all hop in the, the truck together and they kind of get like their first official meeting between the four of them. And you know they they kind of decide to work together, but at the same time not, uh, because it turns out. That the reason that Cap, that John and Lamar showed up is because they were actually tracking Red Wing. So, uh, I mean, it is technically govern- government par- property, so they can do that, but, you know, that's still not very nice. So, that's when Bucky and Sam, they just get annoyed and they're like, all right, we're going off on our own. We're not going to work with you. So then they go get back on their plane and everything, and they're like, all right, let- let's do this on our own but then we flash over to the flag smashers and see how life is going for them and pretty much they're just hanging out seems like they're like invading different places wherever they go and just uh like kind of convincing people to let them stay there and it was kind of weird uh but they also had this weird chant where it was like one world one people no that that wasn't part of it but uh yeah, the, then later in the episode, when we see the Flag Smashers again, kind of the cliffhanger for those characters, is that we see that the like the cops are going after them and stuff, and they almost take them down, uh, but then one of the Flag Smashers just selflessly sacrifices himself, and it's not like he does it in a big way or anything, he's like, alright, I'm just gonna let... Like, like, the others escape, he gets left behind, and he just starts walking towards the cops, and they just all shoot him, and wow, Disney... There's a reason there is a, this is the most maturest rated MCU project so far. But let's get back to Bucky and Sam. Because an episode that I thought, was a part that I just thought was crazy in this episode was the fact that Bucky takes Sam to meet Isaiah Bradley, the original black Captain America. And this this was something we knew was going to be happening. Carl Lumbly was cast in the role and we met him in this episode. And we also met Eli Bradley, who in the comics goes on to become the hero Patriot and joins the Young Avengers. And in this episode, he is played by Elijah Richardson, who, I mean, it was leaked a while ago that he was going to be playing this role. I made a video months ago about that, and looks like it's confirmed. So we just got introduced to a member of the Young Avengers, and I, I mean, it was, he was barely in the episode, but it's such a huge thing that he was there for like the, the five seconds he was there. But we learn a little bit about Isaiah. So he's a super whole, super soldier, and he he was a hero back in the day. But he was put in jail for 30 years, even though he was a hero and he was fi- fighting crime. Most likely it was just because he's black. So it's like, oh, we got to put him in jail because that's how things were back then. And really things aren't like things are better nowadays, but there they're, there's still some progress that needs to be made. So. Yeah, that that's that that's not good. But Isaiah, he's not having it. He's not having a good time, so he's basically kicks them out. So they leave, and Sam and Bucky go outside, and then there's the, these cops here that almost take down Sam, literally just because he's black. But then they realize, oh wait, 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 he's Sam Wilson. He's an Avenger. He cool. He cool. And that's literally the only reason that they don't take him down. And that's just wrong. I mean, this is a huge reflection of what we're seeing in society today, and it's it, it's not right. Like, th- things need to change, and I love that they're bringing awareness to that in this episode, but even though Sam doesn't get arrested, Bucky does because it turns out he missed one of his therapy sessions, and that's like a crime, so then he has to go back uh, to, I, I assume it's like some sort of prison place, and then Sam goes with him, and then this is where we see that part from the first trailer where Sam and Bucky are, of course, starting couples therapy. Ooh la la. So they have a good time there. Not really, because they're just fighting the whole time. And then by the end, they decide to call it a truce. 
I mean, they're still going to squabble. They're still going to have their banter and everything. But for now, they've decided to work together. But when they get out of there, they see John Walker and, and Lamar Hoskins again. And they're like, hey, we should really work together. We can do more together. And at first, Sam and Bucky are like, eh, all right, all right. But then by the end, they're like, no, no, no way, Jose, because like we're 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 free agents, you know. We we can go off on our own. You're you have government jurisdiction, or whatever that word is. So they have to do what the government tells them to. Bucky and Sam, they can do whatever they want. I mean, as long as it's not illegal, you know. Bucky still has to follow his three rules there, um, especially the, the don't hurt any, anybody. So. Yeah, but this is where you see John start to change a little bit. Because at the beginning of the episode, he seemed like a great guy. He seemed like really the perfect guy to take on the mantle of Captain America. But then here in this scene, you really see that he starts to get a little angry. And how at the end, he was like, all right, j- just stay the hell out of my way. And he, I, I, something Bucky mentioned was something about how like this got to be really stressful on you, John. Like you got to be having a hard time. And yeah, like he he's the new Captain America. He has big shoes to fill here. So he's obviously under a lot of stress, especially if people don't like him. And I think we've seen set photos or something of like graffiti or something saying like manufactured cap or stuff like that. That basically means that nobody really likes him as the new Captain America. So he's got to be going under some big stress and this most likely will lead to him becoming a full-on villain. And I I think that that's pretty interesting that they set that up in this episode with like the gradual downfall into the darkness. So that was pretty cool there. Uh, But then our ending for this episode is that we see now that Sam and Bucky are going off on their own. They're like, all right, we have no leads. What are we supposed to do? Let's go talk to the one person that knows a lot about super soldiers and knows a lot about everything that's going on here. So let's go see Zemo. And even though we barely see Zemo, we see that he's in his prison cell still. Somehow he has not escaped yet. We just get one short glimpse of him just in the shadows. It was awesome. I I love this character. And we just got the mention of his name. I just saw him sitting there in the shadows. It it was awesome. Like, I, I, I can't wait to see him in the next episode. Hopefully he'll get his purple mask and everything because he looks amazing in that. And you can tell that he's... It seems like he's almost waiting, and that's what's so creepy about it, because, I don't know, Zemo's just awesome, I I love Zemo, but this whole episode was just amazing, we we got some crazy stuff here, with some developments with John Walker, seeing him dip a little more into the dark side, we got the introduction of both Isaiah and Eli Bradley, setting up the Young Avengers there, and also for Sam to become the next Black Captain America, but yeah, it was a great episode, I absolutely loved it, but let me know your thoughts in the comments below, guys. And thanks so much for watching. Please drop a like if you enjoyed this video and hit the subscribe button so I can keep you up to date on everything that goes on in the Marvel life.